Good afternoon. Welcome back to Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. With me today in the Think Tech studios is uh, Jason Ignacio from Hawaii Energy Connection. Welcome, Jason. Thanks, Ethan. Great to have you here. Uh, Likeable Science is all about how science is a vital and dynamic part of everyone's life. It's not something that's just done in remote laboratories. It really impacts all of us. We all contribute to it. And uh, Jason works with uh, this group, Hawaii Energy Connection, that really, I think, exemplifies a whole lot of that. So maybe give us a quick overview about Hawaii Energy Connection. Sure, uh, Hawaii Energy Connection is uh, basically a photovoltaic energy installer, but that's not all we do. We try to do more sustainable energy solutions as you know, the climate changes here in Hawaii with respect to policy and new technology, we need to be sensitive to that. So we are a contractor that currently installs photovoltaic on rooftop and commercial, and we also do energy storage, and we just launched a new product with uh, photovoltaic for electric vehicle charging. Ah, oh, very cool, very cool. And you do a little piece with hot water stuff too, right? As well as hot water. Oh, okay. uh, so new technology with a, a new twist on an old, you know, it's not your grandmother's water heater anymore. <laughs> so. All right, good, good. Excellent. And, and what is it, let me just start it by, saying, by asking, what is it you really, you really like about your work? What is it that really drives you? It's always changing. It's uh -huh. never the same day to day. Um, be it policy, be it technology, um, dealing with different clients. I get to meet a lot of different people and explain how systems work, how they can save money, how it's a great investment. So there's, you know, financial touches on, on that. There's the technological reasons and there's some sciencey reasons as well. And then there's just practical and then, you know, statewide goals on being sustainable here in Hawaii. So it touches on a lot of things that I think are, are kind of need to be in touch with. And it's, it's an industry that's not, never going to go away. Right. We're always going to need energy. We're always going to try to do things sustainably moving forward. Right. We were both at the uh, Blue Planet Palana yep. la yesterday, and, and yep. they're, they're a great thing about pushing out 20, uh, sustainable energy, 100% sustainable energy by, by 2045. 2045. Yeah. What a goal. What a goal. And it must be great to be part of that. It is. It's rewarding, in fact, that we're trying to help. Yeah. Right. And, and we're really getting in on the grassroots level where people can kind of vote with their dollars, with their own money, and investing in a PV system that helps Hawaii reach that goal. Right, and there's, there's constant shifts in this, right? That there's been subsidies supporting it, and then these look like they're on their way out maybe, and, right. and, and so the whole market has to readjust to that. There's a lot of things that come into play financially with it. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, it's still a great investment. Right. Um, there's different things that factor into that, like what type of tariff Hawaiian Electric is gonna offer. They've changed from a net metering energy metering tariff to a grid supply tariff, and that will change to customer self-supply. And they all have different value implications for anyone who's investing in a PV system. Mm -hmm. um, on the tax credit side, the state still gives 35% tax credit on systems, cool. and the federal government still kicks in 30% tax credits. So you can have up to 65% of your system paid for in the form of tax credits. Wow, oh, that's great. That's it's a great, great incentive. Yeah, I hadn't realized it was still that, that much. Yep. That's wonderful. Yep. That's wonderful. And it's, it's really nice now that the, the technology is evolving, so there's a lot of different options, right, for people who can be more off the grid if they want, but others can be very much right. integrated into the grid where they are both a, a user but also a supplier if, yes. if need be. You know. Yeah, energy storage is coming online very quickly, um, primarily because of the customer self-supply tariff that Hawaiian Electric is um, is going to be offering in the near future. They offer it now, but it's still grid supply is a good option because mm -hmm. they still compensate you for some of that energy at 15 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, when energy storage becomes more of the norm, we can see that price drop drastically. Mm -hmm. you know, right now, if, if you buy a PV system with storage, it's it's as if you were buying a PV system when PV st first started being offered. Huh. Your payback's in about the 10-year range. Right. As technology got better, that price and that payback time, the return on investment got to less than five. Huh. Okay. We're not far. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So, so, and there, there are these, these different components of it. There, there is the, the, the PV itself, right? But that's by no means now sort of the end of that. It, that used to sort of be what people did, right? It was just sort of stick PV on. Yep. And, we kind of call it dumb PV. <laughs> you put it out in the right. sun and it makes electricity. Right. It just right. blasts it when the sun is out and when the nights, nighttime comes, it stops. Right. You know, and it's sort of an inverse correlation as to when we use the energy. Right, because our big energy use is in the evening. When people in are the home. evenings and there's no sun. Right, running all their so, stuff, yeah. Exactly. So managing that flow of energy either into a battery or onto the grid and diverting it to where it can be used at that point in time 
is a huge technological obstacle, both for the utility and on a small scale I we call edge of grid, or where people are using the energy and generating it in these distributed energy resources. We call them DERs. Yeah, that's right. I was, I was just thinking that's got to be a very tricky sort of algorithm, because if you've got a lot of different points that are producing this energy, storing it up, mm -hmm. but then also using it at the, all at the same time, how does the grid deal with that, those various inputs, outputs? You nailed the engineering problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what happens. Right. You, you need to manage it, and it needs to happen at um, almost instantaneously. It can't happen, you know, over an hour's worth. We'll calculate it because renewables are not constant. They're consistently changing. Right. That's the only thing that's constant about them is wind always changes, clouds go over PV systems, a leaf can fall on it. You know, different right. things can factor into the production, as well as the home's individual load. You can have a refrigerator kick on, kick off, right. pumps, lights, whatever. Things vary during the day. Right. Measuring that and managing that so that we have a consistent profile mm -hmm. to show to eco and the grid is super important for stability, for safety, and for, for, for payback, for storing that energy on a, on a really well-managed basis. Right, indeed. HECO uh, at various times, more precarious in the past than now, has really had almost objections to people feeding into it because it, it, it added elements of instability on into it. What, instead, if they've just got one plant producing power, they know pretty much how much power is there at all yep. times, and you know. They can measure yeah. it very easily, yeah. <clears throat> but when they have inconsistent or um, called variable inputs on the distributed energy resource side, it can cause a lot of problems on the grid. Right. But I mean, it's just, it's the, it's the same kind of problem that's occurring everywhere as we get new technologies, right? I mean, the, the thing now, the, one of the big things is self-driving cars, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone understands when we get and all the cars on the road are self-driving. We're going to have a much better system. We're going to have much lower gridlock. We're going to have many fewer accidents. It's all going to be good. Better fuel efficiency. Right. Lots but of things. The, the transition is a little bumpy. You know? <laughs> well, as they call it, it's disruptive technologies. Right. They change the way that we do things. They're a good idea. Right. They work. It's how much can we get to that point of where we get critical mass adopting it to the point where it makes sense for everyone. You know, right. There's an there's, there's equity, equity type of question is to, I'd love to have rooftop solar, but I don't have a roof. Right. I don't own my home. Right. How do I get involved? And I think right. um, one of the things we saw last night at the Blue Planet Foundation, what they're lobbying for is community solar, right. whereby so. folks can invest in a solar system even though they don't have a roof. Right. They can buy in and invest in one to help offset the cost of installing those systems and, help, and still help move forward with renewable energy generation. Yeah, I thought it was a, a, a beautiful example. It's very forward-thinking uh, technologies here, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it, it's, it's intriguing that uh, you're, you've got a, some, what do we want to say, inertia from the system, right? Yes. Uh, because, well, we've always done it this way, and you've got investments in infrastructure and equipment that was set up 10 years ago, 20 years ago in some cases, sure. and yet you're now having to, to try to be very nimble and adjust very quickly to changing demands, changing technologies. The uptake uh, with solar in Hawaii happens so quickly. Uh, we just were in this great zone, a lot of sun, good incentives, and then um, the price of oil shot through the roof, so everybody's electric bills got really high. And that's when we saw the payback and the return on investment really drop into the less than five year time frame. And, you know, over 12 times the expected amount of PV suddenly appeared. Right, that's right. Uh, we had everybody here. We had 200 photovoltaic contractors here in Hawaii. <laughs> Contract. Over 200 wow. contractors, and they're wow. you know, going door to door, knocking, and hey, you want PV? It's going to save you money. Let's mm -hmm. do it. And before you knew it, you had PV on your house. Uh, wow! So uh. before you know, Hiko realized that this is kind of a lot. Right. So they they tapped the brakes a few times, and now they've come up with a with a plan with the PUC to have a real structured environment where PV is being integrated onto the grid. Uh, that's great because it's it really can't you can't operate too easily in a sort of wild west kind of environment, right? Exactly. That's, that, that's, the uncertainties <clears throat> will drive investors away. They'll drive the public away. It's not good for Hawaii when right. we have fly by night contractors come in here to capitalize on a boom, right? And then they leave, right? And you're stuck with a product that's it's attached to your home, right? Its lifespan is 25 years plus, or right. it should be, right? In the best cases, so having someone who's going to be there and really controlling that 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 uptake 
kind of ran away from us a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've seen a bit of that out in uh, Micronesia, where I, where I work, where they'll put in, they've, in some, some of these more remote islands, they put in big PV systems, but then one component breaks, and the whole system is just down, and there's nobody, literally nobody for a thousand miles who can fix it. <laughs> you know, and the equipment or piece needed to fix it may be halfway around the world, and yep. nobody knows how to order it, where to order it from, what to do. And the system stays down for six months or a year, and right. uh, yeah, it's. And I think that's going to be more important as the technology evolves, because like I said, dumb PV was pretty simple. You put it on your roof, you hook it up, you connect it, and you're done. You make electricity. Right. Now we have to manage it a lot smarter, and, and with the different tariffs, there's requirements now and, and types of equipment that can and can't be installed and connected to the grid and. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of things that go into it. On the customer side, sometimes they get a little baffled by it. But we, as, a, as an integrator, solar and renewable, sustainable energy system, renewable integrator, we have to be conscious of those things and, and, and flow with it or we fail. Right. So a big part of this is, is your sort of the, these power blocks, you call them, right? Which are yes. really not just batteries, although you sort of think of them in, in terms of batteries. But they're, they're really, uh, they may be smart batteries, maybe is the word. Well. <laughs> Batteries are batteries, they're like a bucket uh -huh. for water, okay. right? right? Basically, you're just storing it. Okay. How fancy the bucket is and how much it holds. How you can that's pour great, water into but it out How of it. do you get water in and out? How right. do you get power in and out of a battery? Right. That's the thing that really is the technical part. Mm -hmm. So um, part of it, if they want to bring up that first image, is, sure. is energy management control. And that can be a, something, it has to measure what's being produced by the PV system. Right. And also, what is being used by the home? Right. So now we're going to see our an image of our that first photo. I hope. Well, <laughs> in essence, it's it's yeah, technology. It's, right. It's, it's so electronic. It's something that one of our partners helped us develop right. because we said we need something that's going to help us integrate. And we can't just think about putting it in a battery. We need mm -hmm. to think about a larger scale. Like how do we how do we get reporting? How do we get um, a management dashboard, and how do we get the data? It's part of big right. data. Right. How do we integrate these things and then aggregate them right. so we can see what all the PV systems are doing in an area and what all of our systems are doing to the grid and what they're doing with the battery storage? Right. I mean, each one has its own individual history of how fast it's been accumulating and storing energy, how fast it's been dumping out energy and being using energy. It's pattern in terms of if it's three o'clock in the afternoon, sort of what's likely to happen in the next hour. Sure. Both in terms everyone's of everyone's home is on a slightly and, different right. um, plane from the sun. But then, yes, your bigger thing is then linking all those together and being able to, to because that information is very important to Hiko and to others to, to know what, yep. what to expect. Yes. Uh, and and if we can forecast it, we can manage it. Yeah. If we can measure it, we can make changes that we need to. If we're not measuring it, that's dumb PV, just yeah. pumping out electrons. Excellent. We're going to uh, explore this in more depth when we come back. Right now, we're going to take a brief break. Uh, Jason Ignazio from Hawaii uh, uh, Energy Connection is with me here today on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. We'll be right back. Aloha, my name is Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, and I'm the host of Sustainable Hawaii at thinktechhawaii.com. We air live on the internet and also on Oceanic Channel 16. I would invite you to come for a fresh new show every Tuesday from 12 to 1 o'clock. I try to bring on guests that give us a different viewpoint on aspects of sustainability in Hawaii as well as trying to unpack some of the difficult concepts of measuring and achieving sustainability, particularly with regard to sustainable economic growth and prosperity in Hawaii. Please join us every Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. Mahalo, aloha. And you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. With me today is Jason Ignacio from the uh, Hawaii Energy Connection. And we're talking about uh, not just fo photovoltaics, but sort of sustainable energy systems that are being uh, sort of the new the second generation or third generation maybe right. of, of uh, photovoltaics. It, it's photovoltaics, but storage, smart computers basically integrating all this. And it, it really happens on at least two levels. One is for the individual home, residential, or 
commercial center system, right. then too, those systems all have to start talking to one another and talking to the central network. Right. right. And I think we have an image coming up here that, that'll help uh, maybe, maybe allow us to talk about that in a little, little more organized fashion. Uh, yes. Yeah, so at the top of this, this image, you see the PV generation. And that's kind of what we've had in the past. Um, in the center of this now is that computer board that I was showing. It's the EMC, or Energy Management Controller. That gives you visibility as to what the PV system's producing and what the home is consuming. We can look at home load monitoring. We can also look at energy time of use. Now, those things are very important when we talk about what types of um, tariffs are coming down from HECO when they start maybe doing a time of use billing. Oh, yes. Um, and also, it, it integrates battery backup and scalable smart storage, which when you look at energy storage, it helps to stabilize the grid profile, meaning how much do we export and import from the grid with a PV system integrated. So let's say that we store a lot of energy in these batteries that are now attached to people's homes. Mm -hmm. If the grid goes down, not only do they have battery backup, but there could be a potential for the utility to use the energy in your battery. You could sell it back right. to the grid in those times mm -hmm. of outages or if there's a peak usage that, not even an outage, if they just need more, right. they don't have to turn on another fossil fuel burning plant right. to make more energy. They can have an agreement with you saying that, oh, if they're in these peak hours, you mind if we take a little bit of energy from your battery? As long as they're paying you peak rates. <laughs> well, that's, that's part of it. Right. We have to figure out. And that's something I think that, that policy-wise will, will come. Right. But overall, we're looking at that will open up the grid because when we're more stable on the grid, when there's more ebb and flow on a local distributed level, what they call edge of grid, the plants don't have to work as hard. Right, if, if indeed, sort of looking at it in, in sort of a, a ultimate case, if, if every user basically also had a large storage capacity, the whole thing is just buffered out very, sure. very evenly. And, and it, to some extent, it almost doesn't matter what the central grid is producing, right? If everyone's right. got a lot of storage capacity, it can just, Yep. feed in as needed or take out as needed, yeah. Yeah, and, and that yeah. makes it, um, you know, gets us to that goal a lot quicker because yeah. running a large generating plant uh, with peaks and valleys and peaks and lows, it's, it's like driving your car in traffic. You're not going to get the best mileage. Right, and that's, so. that's sort of what dumb PV was doing, right? It was, it was, right. It was oftentimes dumping extra. And artificially lowering the generating plant from HECO to a very low level, and then all of a sudden when sunlight goes down and everybody's use go up, they'd have to ramp up their generation very quickly. Mm, that's, that's, that's a huge technical problem. It's very right. expensive to do. Right, yeah. So. Huh. Interesting, interesting. So, um, and then these, these uh, power blocks are sort of, there's technologies in terms of, I guess you talk about the control of feeding yes. into them, feeding out, and the, it's constantly evolving, even, even if the battery per se is maybe more or less can be yes, yesterday's technology if need be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's what we try to do is try to integrate stuff that's available now. Yeah. Right? It would be great if we could have, you know, those high-tech graphene batteries sure. that charge very quickly, can discharge quickly, and they're very responsive, but the price of them is just not to where a homeowner would be able to purchase it. Yeah. It's, um, it's just not there yet. No, we okay. hope that we'll be. Right. That's exciting stuff. Yeah, it's, that's, I mean, in sort of at the cutting edge, it's always the, the issue is, is melding these different kinds of technologies in sometimes fairly uh, seat of the pants kind of ways, sure. uh, almost. But it's, and there's a lot of right. developing. There's flow batteries that are coming online that are, that are being developed. I think Harvard's working on a flow battery where it's non-toxic. They're just using, you know, aqueous solutions to store electricity. Oh. So non-flammable, non-toxic, re oh. very renewable, long life. We don't know what that's going to look like in 10 to 15 years, right. so we'll see. But the, the management part and the sustainability of making sure that the PV energy goes into a battery effectively is compliant with the rules and regulations set forth by the utility, or um, if folks elect to do an off-grid system, you know, to us it's not quite feasible because you need so much battery capacity. Right. If you're it's just a lot. Yeah. I mean, if you're willing to invest in that, and some folks have to because they're in areas that the, to, to run a line to their house is more expensive than buying those extra right. capacity batteries. So yeah. we're looking at scalable solutions that help, you know, not only help to provide energy for home use and emergency backup, but it's for grid integration. Mm -hmm. So there's algorithms that are programmed into those 
circuits that measure all those uses and make split, decision, split second decisions on whether it should curtail the PV, meaning turn down the amount of generation on the PV, put more into the battery. Mm -hmm. We've also integrated some smart things in there where, you know, future of smart home technology. Right. Maybe it'll turn on an appliance to use some of that load while the PV is still on and the batteries are full. Right, you, you can envision in a, a smart home connecting to a smart system, it would decide you've, you've loaded your dishwasher and it decides like when your dishwasher should best go on really to make, to make the yep. most efficient use of, of the power. And maybe that's 2 a.m., maybe it's 10 p.m., maybe it's 6 a.m., you know? Yep, um, absolutely. Yeah. So home management systems tied in with, with your energy right. management system. Yeah. It's uh -huh. really evolving to the point where you can really make a big difference in your energy use profile and maximize savings and really help the grid. Excellent, excellent. Yep. So say a little bit, if you would, about, about this uh, hot water system. I mean, this is not just a standard, you're not just pumping water up through black PVC pipes on the roof and right. stashing it. Right, so this is a system we brought in um, a few years ago, and um, it's pretty ingenious. So instead of using pumps, like you said, and, and pumping the water through big thermal collectors where the water is heated within the panel, it runs off of PV electricity. Okay. So there's two heating elements that are actually powered by PV panels that are on your roof. So instead of running plumbing up to the roof, it's just conduit and wires. Okay. They're much smaller, there's less weight, there's less load on the home, and it integrates beautifully with PV because they're the same size panels. Uh -huh. So the efficiency on them is, it's, you know, at least as good if not better than traditional hot water systems. Huh. So these are essentially then hot water systems directly integrated and powered by photovoltaic panels. Yes. Oh, very, very cute. And they don't require uh, approval from Hawaiian Electric because they're not backfeeding electricity. Oh. They're, There's in essence, water heater is a storage. Right. It's storing the energy as heat in a container that's insulated. Right. How we heat that water is through a renewable resource with the PV electricity. Yeah. So it's an electric heater, but it's powered by PV panels. Right, and, and water, and I hadn't realized it until I was reading your, your stuff, uh, heating hot water in a home is a huge, I hadn't realized, 40, 45 percent of typical Those home are use. stats from yeah. uh, Hawaii Energy and yeah. some national statistics that show that about 40 percent of the yeah. home energy use is in heating water. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And so, yeah, if you can just do that instead and... and I mean, that's, again, it seems like sort of yep. a no-brainer for a lot of people. But yeah, I think a lot of folks have made that first step. And it doesn't matter what type of water heating you're doing, if, if it's thermal or the new PV systems. It's, um, that's typically what we can see as far as savings, and then you've just become that much more renewable. Right, and yep. at the same time, you're pulling out much less power off the grid. and you, you, Absolutely. You, your, your impact on the grid as you go up and down is that much lower. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it, again, it's sort of a win-win-win here. For sure. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. That, that's super. Um, I think we had another image here that you... Sure, if we can bring up, I guess, image three. three. This is sort of how the, the electronic or electric vehicle PV charger works. So you have a, what's called a PV microgrid. Um, it has an energy management controller, which then can feed into the batteries and we have what's called an automatic transfer switch which if the batteries are not charged enough it can pull grid power if it needs to oh, very neat. and mm -hmm. in parallel it can pull PV energy from your existing PV system uh -huh. what it does is it charges the batteries in the daytime okay. so you can plug your car in at night you can go to the next image it's just showing um, the basic connection, it's a regular car charger, uh -huh. plugging into the car, and they, you, you can't get PV at night. Right. We haven't gotten that far, technologically <laughs> speaking, but you can use the energy if you've stored it during the day. Right, okay. That, that's, that's, so that's, most people that, that get electric vehicles, I think, are environmentally conscious. They want to be responsible, sure. um, and they want to be green. Mm -hmm. and, and save money on gas and reduce our, our, our uh, fossil fuel dependence on driving a car that's run on gasoline. Right. And that was one of the things Jeff brought up last night. That's the biggest next hurdle is transportation. Right. It's right. huge. Um, but when we charge our cars at night, you're burning fossil fuels. Right. Unless you've stored that energy. Right. But, but the system, I see you're saying, you do this at your own home, and, and it's a, and the solar energy that you've stored during the day yep. then sort of depletes your home batteries but charges your car's batteries. It makes your EV even greener. Right. Yeah. And then, because you're using renewable energy. Right. 
Yeah, it's, it's again, it evens out that load. Uh, in, Absolutely, in yeah. and it provides a critical load backup outlet just in case. Um, these systems are designed to work even if the grid is down. So mm -hmm. those batteries will be charged. You know, maybe in an emergency, you're not going to be driving anywhere right? because it's not safe to drive. Right. But the power goes out. You still have some reserve power within those batteries um, to plug in a couple of things. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's... Uh, it's not huge loads that you could plug into it, but maybe it's your, your emergency, you know, critical loads that you want to have plugged in. Right. Well, keep your freezer cold. And, and keep the phone charged. Right. Keep the radio going. Those right. types yeah. of things. A few basic stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. Medical equipment especially. Oh, yes. Right. That's, right. that's a huge one. If sure. you have medical equipment that needs to be on. The during those and all, of course, have to, have to have that kind of backup. Yeah. And some folks at home as right. well. So right. Nebulizers, those things. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Well, this is this is great. This is it's very exciting to look at this uh, and uh, the seeing that the, as you say it, it's sort of it's a there's endless frontiers here. I mean, it's just new stuff coming yep. all the time. New technologies are kicking in. New policies are enabling uh, the better use and more effective use of things. So it's got to be very very exciting. I, there's always a challenge yeah. with it, and, and right. folks have, you know, there's, there's been numerous hurdles where people say it's not worth doing anymore. Well, every time that we come up against a hurdle, there seems to be an innovation that gets us over that hurdle. Oh. Whether it's, you know, oh, the, the grid is saturated, we can't implement any more PV. Okay, well, let's solve that right. and move forward. Yeah. So it, it's an exciting field, and, and, um, and it's helping Hawaii do a lot of Excellent. good things and moving towards our goals. Super. Well, it's been very exciting to learn about it. I thank you so much, Jason, for coming, thank coming you. by. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, uh, <coughs> Jason Ignacio from Hawaii Energy Connection. You've been watching Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. I hope you'll join us next week. Thanks very much. See you then.